my name is Rich DeStanisel. I'm with the Doc Fritchie chapter of Trout Unlimited, and I'm your feature tire for today. Today I'd like to introduce you to the Granum Caddis dry fly pattern. The Granum, also known as the Mother's Day Caddis, is one of the most popular flies in Pennsylvania. It kind of rivals the Green Drake in popularity. It's known as the Mother's Day Caddis because of the time of year that it hatches. A lot of times the trout are taking the subsurface version of the, of the granum. However, when it's time for the females to come down and lay their eggs on the surface, the trout really get into a frenzy. And to me, nothing is more exciting than seeing these trout slashing at the surface on these dry flies. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my, my version of a granum caddis dry fly. We're tying the granum caddis dry fly. And this is what it's going to look like. This is a, a very prolific fly, uh, the Mother's Day caddis, that happens at the uh, early part of May. And uh, very exciting for the fish. We follow it just like we do the green dray catch. So I'm going to start off with a dry fly hook. This is a size 12. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my black thread and coat the hook shank, the straight part, back to the bend. Now, I think that on these dry flies, granum dry flies, I like to tie in the fluorescent optic green egg sac. I think this is one of the, the great features of fishing these dry flies. So I'm going to get some super fine poly in this optic green, spin it around my thread and right at the bend, right on the top of the bend, I'm going to create a ball. That represents the egg sac. The next thing I want to do is tie in a ribbing and I'm going to use some fluorescent green 3 aught unit thread. I want this fly to float so I don't want to use wire to rib. So my thread, my ribbing material is tied in and for the body I have Antron in a dark olive color. The Antron uh, has a little bit of sparkle to it, a little bit of coarseness, and also it does not absorb water. So it has all the attributes that I really want in a dry fly. And I'm going to pick off a bit of it and dub this onto my thread. I'm going to spin it on the thread. If I have to, I stick my fingers in some tacky wax. And I want to create a body that's going to go two-thirds of the way up the hook shank. So I'm going to start back at the ball, at the fluorescent ball, and create the body. Work my way up. Need a little bit more dubbing. Never try to do all this at one time, all the dubbing at one time. You end up with, with a mess, typically. So there, I'm about two-thirds of the way up the hook shank. I'm going to take my fluorescent green thread that I use for ribbing and make about four turns, open spirals, just like you would rib with gold wire only instead of using wire, you're using the thread so that we don't overweight this hook. Cut off the excess. Now, the part of the hook that I didn't cover yet, I want to put a good base on. And I'm going to put an underwing. And I like 
natural Col de Canard in a natural color oiler puff. These things are hard to tame and they're hard to tie on, but if you dip your finger in some water, you can compress that. And as the water dries, it'll open back up. Now this is an underwing, so I tied it right on top and over the back. I want it the length back to the bend of the hook. So that's the length that I want. Cut off the excess. Now, a lot of folks like wings made out of deer hair or elk hair. Uh, my preference on caddis wings is mink tail. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. Mink tail, to me, is not brittle. Mink tail repels water. I, I always have problems with deer hair and elk hair breaking at some point or coming loose with my thread. Um, I don't seem to have that problem with uh, the mink tail. So what I'm going to do is I have a dusty dun. That's a... a gray colored mink tail with a little bit of a tan cast to it. And I'm going to get about a quarter of an inch of these mink tail guard hairs. Cut it off at the base and using my dubbing needle I'm going to pick out all this hair at the bottom. So that basically, what I have left are the guard hairs. Much like you do with deer hair, you brush it out or pull it out what, the, the best you can. Still a lot in there. There. Get my hair stacker, put this in tips down, tamp the hair, and I'm going to put this over top of that Col de Canard oiler puff. This is going to be the wing. Remember, I saw about a third of my hook up front here. And I really want to get this locked down. So I'm going to go back and forth. Not quite to the eye. Lift up these fibers in the front, cut them off. I want the eye clean. couple strays. I'm going to make sure I have these mink tails really locked down. When I tie this fly on my leader, I don't want to pull that wing out. So I, ha I want to get a good hackle. Again, I prefer hackles from the whiting saddle, rooster saddles. And I love their grizzly feathers that are dyed another color. I like a dark dun color for granum for the front collar hackle. And I like the grizzly dyed dun. I'm going to cut a brush so that when I tie this in, I'm going to tie it in by the curved side facing up. I'm not going to wrap it just yet. Caddis have a, a large head. And to me, one of the things that I like to incorporate 
is a peacock curl. I'm going to tie peacock curl right in and I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to create, I'm going to coat this front up to the eye, the front of the hook up to the eye with a peacock curl. Tie it off right at the eye. And now with my whiting saddle hackle, I want to make about four nice turns. And tie this off right at the back of the eye. I'm not trying to build up a head at this point. That's what that peacock curl was doing. Using the whip finisher right at the eye. I'm going to make my couple of turns. Angle my tying thread toward the front and snip it off. And there I have my finished granum fly. See the egg sac on the back? It stands out. The mink tail floats it. All the materials that I've used are synthetic, except for the peacock curl. And that's not a big deal because I have a good quality hackle to support it. So this, this is a great fly to use when the females are out laying their eggs. It's a terrific pattern, and I guarantee you it'll catch trout. Mm -hmm.